But yeah, this is the part of the video where you guys are probably wondering, do I like the switchblade? Am I gonna keep this bike? Should you get a pivot switchblade? And is this the right bike for you? The switchblade really does feel like that bike you can put exactly where you want it, which is why I love it so much and really have been loving my time like coming down this slab. I feel like where I really love this bike is any time I had to kind of pick my line down a trail, kind of crawling into steeper sections. What's going on you guys? Mo Awesome here and welcome back to the channel. Uh, it is finally here, our first official review since going independent and starting our new mountain bike media company, awesomemtb.com. One month review of my new Pivot Switchblade. This is actually the Talon Edition. Now, before we get into the review of this Pivot Switchblade, if you guys are ever in the market for your next mountain bike, I highly recommend giving our friend Sean at M plus one bikes a call. They are one of the largest Ibis, Pivot, Yeti, Rocky Mountain, Envy, and a few other brands dealers in the nation. Their customer service is second to none. On top of it, Southern Hospitality, those guys are awesome. They take care of friends of the channel, so be sure to let them know that Mo and Hannah sent you. They will take care of you. Huge shout out to Sean with M plus one bikes. We'll leave their information in the description of this video. Now the build itself is the Exo Transmission Pro build with the upgraded carbon wheels. Um, I actually went with a size extra large, so that's what the frame itself is. I'm about six foot two if you guys want that for reference. And this thing actually fits me like a glove. I run all of my bikes, size extra large. So yeah, that's why I went with the XL on this. Um, for suspension actually came with the Fox 36 originally. I actually ran it with the Fox 36 for a little bit and then I ended up switching to the DVO Onyx 38 to put a little bit of testing time on this fork. I've actually been super stoked on it. We'll talk more about that later. In the rear, I did end up swapping out that Fox Float X. To the Topaz on here, it's also a DVO shock. For the pedals, I'm running DD T-Max on here. For brakes, I'm running Ceram Code RSCs. It has the stock pivot handlebars on here with stock pivot stem. For grips, I actually ended up swapping out the stock lizard skin ones. For these Ergon GDH grips that actually just came out, these things have been incredible, especially gloveless. I'm a very picky rider when it comes to grips because I don't like to run gloves. And yeah, I feel like the Ergon GDH has a really nice profile on here. For wheels, like I said, it does have the upgraded carbon wheels on here. So the DT Swiss 1501s with 240 hubs. Dropper post is Kashima coated Fox factory dropper post. Uh, for the saddle though, this is actually the specialized mirror saddle on here. This thing is insanely comfortable. It's 3D printed. It looks super weird to the eyes. Now, that is the build that I've been testing the switchblade. With that being said, enough of me talking. I feel like we should go for a ride out on the 50 year trail system. So let's go for a ride. Yew. So the test lap for today's video is actually out here in Tucson, Arizona. We're riding the 50 year trail system. This is a DW link suspension design bike. And if you guys know me, you know, I really do like DW Link. I feel like it has a little bit of everything, right? I feel like DW Link has a good pop to it, has nice traction off the top stroke, that initial stroke, but at the same time, it doesn't feel too bogged down when it comes to more pedally style trails, like the climb to get to the downhill on this one. And as you guys can tell, man, I just really want to put the power down and pedal this thing. And even if I get out of the saddle, sprint it's got a really good acceleration to it doesn't feel like an enduro rig then at slower speeds where you're kind of just cruising going over some technical chunk the bike feels completely different it feels like once again it's kind of stuck to the trail a lot of traction there which man pivot really dialed in the dwing where the technical turny section begins and that's another place i'm going to say the pivot switchblade definitely shines and because pivot didn't go too slack on the head angle you still get a pretty good responsive front end and then they do have a slightly higher bottom bracket which made that section cleaned with ease got a little bit more technical moves right here i will say i do have this bike in the low setting so i haven't gotten a chance to really test it out in the high setting just yet coming from laguna beach which has trails that require, I feel like a little bit more high speed stability. I do prefer low settings traditionally, but I could totally see myself utilizing that high setting out here. Forget this, yes, it really freaking makes it feel too easy almost. And now I'm alternating between in and out of the saddle on these bigger moves. As you could tell, I was able to pop that front end up and then just crank that power down. This bike feels like it's made for that move, the whole up and over thing. All right, Slab City, we're heading to a trail out here with a lot of moves. Probably one of my favorites. 
and we're really gonna test this thing out on some techie sections. You guys probably know the Switchblade is not just a climbing bike, it's an enduro bike, which means what goes up must go down quickly. This section right here is where I feel like the Switchblade really shines. And this is probably the part of the review you guys are all waiting for. Nose pivot down here. Man, the Switchblade really does feel like that bike you can put exactly where you want it which is why I love it so much and really have been loving my time like coming down this slab. Also love those code RCs on here and this little up and over move like ease. As you guys could tell, man, this thing handles technical sections. You can talk down it pretty much. That's how confident it makes you feel on the bike. And it really has this weird ability to allow you to put the bike exactly where you want it to. Combine that with that Onyx 38 that I put on here from TVO. Man, you really do feel like a much better rider than I am. I feel like the Switchblade has really opened my eyes to a different type of riding where I'm searching for lines I normally would not have searched for. Because this bike really feels like it's bringing the little Arizona desert rat out of me. It's got a nice pop and play, but at the same time, like that, even if you don't really fully know what's on the other side, you're able to navigate terrain with ease. God, I love this bike. I also love these views. And slap sections like this, no problems whatsoever. This bike is so freaking fun. Now I will say, are there any drawbacks to the bike? I mean, obviously every bike is not gonna be amazing at everything, right? And having a slightly higher BB, ooh, oh my God, clip the bars right there. Having that slightly higher BB while I feel like it does insanely well out here. And for that rider that really wants to flick that rear end around and also have a ton of fun on technical terrain. I do feel like sections like this, which are a little bit more corner focused, I tend to feel like I would like that BB ever so slightly lower. It's not a deal breaker. And once again, it comes with its own set of benefits. For instance, like when I take the HD6 I've been testing out out here, it freaking feels amazing on these sections. But on those up and overs and those moves, I do feel slightly more confident on this bike. And obviously the pedaling platform on this, two different bikes, but I think you guys know the winner there, even though that bike does pedal really well. Going through here. Hi. Woo. Who is this bike for? And what's the final verdict in the Pivot Switchblade? Let's head back to camp and figure it out. Let's get into the review of my Pivot Switchblade. Let's break things down real quick. The first thing I wanna talk about is climbing. Now, if you guys have ever been to South Mountain, which is Pivot Cycle's backyard, you know that it is a jagged, chunky rock fest. So many technical moves and obstacles, and that's truly where I feel like this bike shines climbing-wise. You can definitely tell that they wanted to perfect a bike that climbed perfectly in their backyard. And I think that comes with that slightly higher bottom bracket that are traditionally found on Pivot bikes, as well as a higher stack height, because that's gonna be something you're gonna notice right Right off the get-go. Actually, I have a Yeti SB140 in for testing right now on the lunch ride, and this bike actually has almost a 20 millimeter, I think it actually is a little bit more than 20 millimeters, basically a full inch higher stack height than that Yeti SB140. So that means that these handlebars are gonna be a little bit higher overall. You definitely feel that while climbing, and what that allows you to do on the trails is those kind of more technical rock moves where you're kind of putting that bike up and over on tech sections. Man, there is so much control of the front end of this thing, and you can tell that they really focus on trying to optimize traction over those technical sections. The bike itself is a DW link suspension style bike, so pedaling in and out of the saddle is as efficient as possible. DW link is actually one of my favorite suspension platforms. It really does feel like when you get on this bike and you get out of the saddle and you start sprinting, this thing is so efficient. It's just like a rock ship. It has a more of like an XC vibe to it. However, when a technical section comes up and it's time to slowly make your way up, traction is apparent. And that's what I like about DW link, where I feel like bikes with a VPP suspension style um, definitely feel a little bit kind of stiffer off of the top. The DW Link has always impressed me with how soft it feels in that initial stroke. However, out of the saddle, it still feels like it tightens up slightly and it gives you that acceleration that you really want when you're out of the saddle. I do feel like this bike has a very comfortable pedaling position. Even though the rear chainstay is a little on the shorter side, it doesn't feel too unbalanced. And yes, this bike does have a little bit longer of a reach. But like I said, I did feel very planted in the bike while pedaling. 
Something to note though, I did feel like the seat angle on this bike was just slightly on the slacker side um, in comparison to where I would want it to be. Now I am running this bike in the low position. If I was to put this in the high position, I do feel like the seat angle would be absolutely perfect. It would be exactly what I want. But for me personally, I've been in a very aggressive mood lately. I've been trying to challenge myself with downhill. So having this bike in the slack position is awesome, but it is cool to know that I can switch this to the high position. Now for everyone's favorite part of the review, and I feel like most people's favorite part about riding the downhill. And this is where this bike has truly put a smile on my face. Like I said, Arizona personality, and you can truly feel that way. I feel like where I really love this bike is any time I had to kind of pick my line down a trail, kind of crawling into steeper sections. Um, there was a lot of slabs out in the 50 year trail system, and then also some really dicey lines out in Sedona. I feel like I can put the switchblade exactly where I want it. This thing feels like a knife. And yeah, Precision is, I feel like, the name of the game to this bike. And I feel like a lot of that's going to come from uh, Pivot not going too aggressive with the Geo numbers. They do have the Firebird if you are a type of rider that you just want to go all out and just kind of let off the brakes and just never pick your line. That is definitely a bike that's probably going to be a little bit more up your alley. This is going to handle almost everything the Firebird can handle. But like I said, that Precision is really what makes this bike so enjoyable on the downhill. The rear end of this bike is also super short. They do the super boost and I feel like that is what allows them to achieve a shorter chainstay on here than other bikes in the similar travel category. And you really do notice how nimble the rear end of this bike is given the longer reach of the front end. So you get that stability from the front end, the longer reach from there, but you get a really nimble rear end to where you're able to put that rear wheel exactly where you want it. And I was able to flick it around on the trails and have a ton of fun. Another thing to note is anytime that you need to kind of manual off a section or off of a ledge, like I said, short chainstays does help contribute to that. Actually, that slightly higher bottom bracket that can be found on Pivot Cycles, I did find pretty beneficial for certain trails out there. For places, especially Arizona, having that slightly higher bottom bracket does actually help out with some downhills, especially when you're trying to navigate your pedals. Like I said, I am running more aggressive T-Max on here. So yeah, it was nice not just being slammed to the ground for trails out there. Now, in terms of things that I haven't necessarily loved about the Switchblade, or I think you might not necessarily love, I do think that each bike has its own personality. That's actually something that I love about testing. For this bike, that bottom bracket height, I have been testing a couple of bikes with slightly lower bottom brackets, and there is something, especially for fast, high-speed flow trails, being a little bit lower to the ground, you do get kind of that kind of on-rails feeling, but I do feel like this bike sometimes misses out on slightly. Now, it's nothing too extreme, and like I said, the trade-offs are amazing. For fast, flowy downhills, even though this bike does amazing, I do notice on bikes with slightly lower bottom racks, a little bit of added stability from those. Another thing here is short chain stays aren't necessarily for everyone. I have been testing a couple of bikes with longer chain stays, and what you do get from that is a similar on-rails feeling from the downhills, which some riders out there might actually prefer. Another thing, like I said, is that slightly higher stack height. So as you guys can tell, I don't have too many spacers left underneath my bars, and this is probably my ideal handlebar position, but if you're a type of rider out there that you really like to get as low as possible, do know that this bike does have a slightly higher stack height. A couple of other things to note that don't necessarily have anything to do with the switch lay, but actually this build itself. Um, Ceram transmission, I feel like I am beating a dead horse slightly here. I definitely am not the biggest fan of transmission. I just feel like the shifting is a tad delayed over AXS. I was a huge Ceram AXS fan, and I do have a little bit of a faster paced riding style. I really like to get through those shifts quickly. I can feel like a half second delay with the transmission. So yeah, I just haven't been too stoked on that. The wheels too, I feel bad mentioning this because these wheels actually have been so awesome. They're really light. They've been super reliable. I feel like tire setup has been awesome on here as well. And once again, you guys, these have been bulletproof, but there's just not that wow factor on here. At the end of the day, the price point of this build is definitely up there. I want to say it's in the $9,000 price point with the upgraded wheels. And I do understand the DT Swiss 240 hubs are on the lighter side. For me personally, I think a little bit more of an exciting setup if this was to be my personal bike long term is I actually would want i9 Hydra hubs on here. And I feel like a little bit more of just a cooler wheel factor. I don't know if that makes sense. Like I said, I've been so used to running i9 Hydra hubs and there's just something about this bike in the desert that is amazing. And in the desert is actually where I feel like I benefit most from i9 Hydra hubs or just another similar high engaging hub. So yeah, that is something I'm going to put there as the wheel set. In terms of things that I absolutely love about this build, like I said, the saddle has been awesome. The new DVO Onyx 38 has been incredible. Um, these Ergon GDH grips, I actually have been liking them a lot. But yeah, this is the part of the video where you guys are probably wondering, do I like the switchblade? Am I going to keep this bike? Should you get a pivot switchblade? And is this the right bike for you? I will say this, if you're the type of rider that's looking for a 29er to do a wide variety of things insanely well, you prioritize climbing, you like to be efficient on the climbs, but at the same time, you still want something that's 
that's very capable on the downhills. I can't recommend this bike enough. I really do feel like this is one of the ultimate 140 millimeter 29ers on the market, and it doesn't go too aggressive in any side of the spectrum. I don't feel like they went too crazy on the Geo to where this only works in Arizona. I do feel like this is gonna work amazingly on so many trail systems out there. At the same time too, they didn't go too aggressive on the enduro side of this bike to where this thing is gonna feel overbearing on more trail style rides out there. That's something that I have noticed is if you go too extreme on a 140 millimeter 29ers on the downhill side, then you just don't want to ride more mellow trails where I would actually feel totally okay bringing this to an XC ride. Obviously, you're probably not going to be putting XC paces, but I will say it's going to be interesting to see how this bike is going to compete with their Trail 429. I do feel like this actually gives that Trail 429 a run for its money in terms of pedaling efficiency. Obviously, it's not going to be as light with the build. However, it's such an efficient pedaler, but so much more capable on the downhills. And yeah, I think that's what really makes this bike special. I will say we do have a 140 millimeter 29er video that's going to be coming out relatively soon, as well as a comparison between this and that Yeti SB 140 that I have in for testing. So stay tuned for that. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Let us know in the comment section if you have any other questions. Once again, you guys, N plus one bike. Sean, if you guys are in the market for your next mountain bike, huge thank you to Pivot for helping out with this. And yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Until next time, you guys, ride awesome. If you get the like button, it helps out a lot. I'm gonna go ride my bike. See you guys later.